If you love the NBA draft, you have to follow me on Twitter because I'm breaking down everything that you need to do know as we are just under 14 days away from the big day getting underway. For example, Terrence Shan Jr. had some legal issues. Well, you would know that he is no longer under trial and that trial's passed and he was found not guilty. For example, now he could rise up draft boards as there's no off-court concerns. So follow me at Nick underscore Roloff to be the most informed NBA draft guy out there. We are just under two weeks away from the first round of the NBA draft happening on Wednesday, June 26th, and it's time for my fifth mock draft. I do one a week and at least the last couple weeks leading up to the draft, so we should have two more, one next week and one just before on Monday or Tuesday, but it's time to get into Mock Draft 5.0. No trades on this one. We'll just run it through the top 30. Alex Sar going one. I've continue to mock him. I just think he's the best fit, and as the Hawks are likely going to move off from Clint Capella, they get a center with high upside defensively, and if he could develop a jumper, he can be quite the two-way player, and he could run a pick and roll really well, whether it's Trey Young running the handle, or if it's DeJounte Murray. The Wizards at number two go Zachary Rissacher, the forward from France, he just fits any type of system, good catch-and-shoot guy, good length, athleticism. A lot of rumors and reports are that he won't fall past two, so if Sar goes one, I think Risa Cher goes two. Reed Shepard, the Kentucky guard, going to the Rockets here at three. They might trade out of this pick, but if they keep it, I think Shepard's a no-brainer. They just need shooting and versatility. They get a good point-of-attack defender and Shepard who could learn under Fred Van Vliet, hone his offensive craft, but also provide them with shooting immediately as he shot above 50% from three for Kentucky just a year ago. Spurs have two first-round picks, and both of them in the top 10. They're first. I'm going to go with Matas Bazilis, my favorite guy in this draft. Not my number one guy on my big board, but he is my number three. Buzilis is an elite defensive player, and he can really be a two-way guy. Competitor, good mentality. Actually challenged Zachary Rissacher to a one-on-one -on -one match earlier in the draft process. I love what he can bring to the table. In a front court of Buzilis and Victor Wembanyama could easily be the best defensive front court for the next eight to ten seasons in San Antonio. If he's able to hone in on his offense and improve his three-point shot, look out, that could be a nasty duo forming in San Antonio. Give me a bold prediction for the NBA draft. You know, I just felt like, like, what happens? Like, I want something crazy. Do you think someone trades up? Do you think, like, Cody Williams falls out of the lottery, Nikola Topic? Falls out of the lottery. Give me one bold prediction on the NBA draft that could be happening in the next two weeks. Don't connect here as we get back to our mock draft going five to the Detroit Pistons. They need shooting and they need help offensively alongside Cade Cunningham, Osar Thompson, and Jalen Duran. Connect, probably the best volume three-point shooter, and I think he could project as someone to score 15 a game and really just be an overall offensive threat in any system. I like Connect. I think he could be a good fit if he, if Buzilis is off the board. I think Matas Buzilis is the number one guy for Detroit. He's off the board. I think they should go Connect. Stephon Castle heading to the Charlotte Hornets with the sixth overall pick. Castle wants to be a one in the NBA. Obviously, they have LaMelo Ball there already, but them two can work really well off each other, in my opinion, where LaMelo can play off ball at times. So can Castle. Castle's a better defender to help LaMelo, who's not as good as a defender. The size, defense, playmaking is all there in a duo of Castle and LaMelo Ball. The Blazers are a team that are rumored to want Donovan Klingon. I don't know if he'll be there on draft night, but the way my mock draft fell, Klingon is, and I think they'd be ecstatic with taking the UConn center, the seven-footer, to be the replacement to DeAndre Ayton or Robert Williams, who just have not been it for the past season in Portland. Klingon would be a no-brainer for the Blazers. The second pick for the Spurs, my Nikola Topic slide ends here. Topic is my second overall player in this draft. I just think he is an excellent playmaker, good size at 6'6". Wingspan, not so good, but with his partially torn ACL, 
falling down boards a little bit here, but the slide should stop here as the Spurs are looking for a point guard to run the pick and roll with Wemby and facilitate. If the Spurs came away with Topic and Buzilis, look out. That is a good young trio forming for the Spurs. The Grizzlies probably want Donovan Klingon, but if they don't, I think Devin Carter is the right pick. The do-it-all guard from Providence who can play on ball, play off ball, defend, rebound. He averaged 8.7 rebounds a game in the Big East as a 6'2 guard, has a 42-inch vertical and a 6 um, and a plus 6 wingspan, excuse me, that comes out to about 6'8. Carter is dynamic, could be coming off the bench to help out John Morant, win now player, learn behind Marcus Smart, no brainer in my opinion. The Jazz go upside with Ron Holland at number 10, the forward from the G League Ignite, who at bare minimum will be a above average defender in the NBA. Great athleticism, can't shoot the ball though. It is real ugly how bad he can shoot it. But if Holland can even become a below average shooter and not a horrific shooter, there's a lot of room to grow for someone who could finish at the cup at a, a good rate as well as be a lockdown wing defender in the NBA. Cody Williams going 11 here to the Chicago Bulls. I think he could go anywhere between 4 to 11 realistically. Cody's got a lot of upside. Younger brother of Jalen Williams from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Williams can play defense. He can shoot the three ball. Good size, good length. We'll need to develop more of an on-ball presence if he wants to take that next step. But I like Cody Williams in Chicago. The Thunder need to add more size alongside Chet Holmgren, either backing him up or alongside him. I think Ware can be that guy. Someone I've comped to Miles Turner in the past. He's seven feet tall. He averaged 10 rebounds, shot 43% at Indiana. Low volume, but he can shoot the rock. I think Ware, who has been rising up boards and receiving a lot of buzz to go in the lottery, could find a nice home in Oklahoma City to pair with Chet Holmgren. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we're going to have the best NBA draft coverage and more videos leading up to the big day on Wednesday, June 26th. So hit that sub button, turn on notifications as well so you never miss a video. The Kings find their Malik Monk replacement as he's likely to leave in free agency and Rob Dillingham, one of the best ball handlers and scorers in this draft. Undersized and has a very small frame, which causes concern for me. And I don't know what his long-term upside is, but he can be a six-man-of-the-year type player off the bench and I think is the perfect replacement for Malik Monk. Tajani Saloon heading to the Portland Trailblazers with pick number 14. Another Frenchman here, high upside, athletic, showcased some ball handling as well. Played extremely well down the stretch for Cholette in his postseason overseas. Someone that has a lot of upside in his draft range could go anywhere from early, late lottery to mid-20s, if we're being honest. First pick outside the lottery, Jared McCain heading to the Miami Heat, the Duke guard who shot 43% from three a season ago. He has one of the quickest releases and most repeatable shot forms in this draft. A team in Miami that is looking for more shooting and point of attack defense on the perimeter will find their man in Jared McCain. The Sixers pick at 16 and take Tristan Da Silva, the do-it-all forward from Colorado. He can shoot the three ball, shot at 39%, can play make, can defend, 6'8", 6'10", wingspan. Da Silva is someone who can have an immediate impact like Jaime Jaquez Jr. did a year ago for the Miami Heat. Da Silva filling out that roster alongside Maxi, Joe Embiid, and whoever they sign in for agency makes a lot of sense if you're Daryl Morey. Jalen Tyson, maybe a little bit of shock here, but heading to the Lakers at 17, Tyson is someone that, after doing extensive study and more look at this class, watching film, has been shooting up my board. I really like Tyson, man. Athletic, averaged 19 points a game, dog mentality, can run the pick and roll, doesn't settle, can score at all three levels, explodes to the rim, but also has a pretty solid jumper, can play the two, can play the three, can play the one. I think he can do it all. Someone I've compared to Caleb Martin in the past, but that might be a little bit underselling what he can do. I think there's a chance he goes really close to the lottery. Like here at 17 to the Lakers, there's been a lot of people thinking he could be a second round pick or mid-20s. I'm kind of leaning towards the lottery. I like Tyson. 
Carlton Carrington would be an excellent selection for the Magic at 18. He's a guard who flashed onto the scene, had a triple-double in his first ever collegiate game at Pitt, by the way. One of the best movement shooters in this draft, gets to the mid-range and rises above his opponent. Good wingspan in length, which allows him to really rise up, similar to Devin Booker in a way, to where he can get you on his back or coming off of a curl on a screen and just rise up and you can't really do much about it. Carrington would be filling a much-needed role of backcourt scoring alongside Franz Wagner and Paolo Bancaro for the Magic. The Raptors need some size behind Jakob Podol. Zach Eady could be that man. I'm not the biggest Zach Eady guy. He's my 31 or 32nd guy on my board, but I think the cat or not the Cavs, excuse me, the Raptors reach for Eady to grab some size off the bench for Jakob Podol. Little run on setters here as Eves Misi, the center from Baylor, heads to the Cavaliers at 20. Misi's got a lot of versatility to him, can rim run, can block. The Baylor Bears also ran some offense to, through Misi where they would isolate him on a slower or smaller big at the top of the key, and he would have a little face up drive action to him. I like Misi's ability to finish, excellent lob threat right off the bat. Misi could be someone to help a competitor and a contender right away, and to me, the Cavs might move off from Jared Allen. Maybe they grab Misi as his replacement in a cheaper option. The draft is almost here, and make sure you get your NBA draft hats. All 30 teams have them on stock right now. Chatsports.com slash draft hats. Just a couple examples. You see the curved brim for the Warriors. You saw the flat brim for the Heat. Every team in different styles, whether it be snapbacks, fitted, curved, they got them all. Get yours today to represent what the top prospects will wear on stage for the NBA draft at chatsports.com slash draft hats. Back to the final 10 picks here. Kyle Filipowski continues to run a big man heading to the um, New Orleans Pelicans, excuse me. I think they are going to probably lose Jonas Valanciunas in free agency. And could they grab Filipowski to pair with Zion, make a Duke front court? Filipowski can space the floor. Um, not the best defender, negative wingspan. So I'm not sure if he's going to be a good defender, but can provide some offense off the bench. Tyler Smith, the forward from the G League Ignite, going to the Suns here. This might be a pick that doesn't really make sense for Phoenix as they need a win now piece to help. KD, Book, and Beal, but to me, it would be the most logical landing spot for Tyler Smith. A 6'10", 6'11", guy with a 7'1", wingspan, explodes toward the, the rim, finishes with the best of them, really good athlete, putback slams, alley-oops, can do it all, can maybe even play the three or four, and to me, I'd like to see Tyler Smith get some work in with Kevin Durant, learn under him, another person who's really tall, for his position, if he can develop more of a face-up isolation jump shot type game, we could have one of the most dynamic players in the NBA on our hands that is an all-NBA type guy that fell to 22. The Bucks take Isaiah Collier here at 23, the bulldog point guard from the USC Trojans. 6'2", 6'3", um, physical, drives to the rim, absorbs contact extremely well, finishes through the contact as well. Needs to improve his jumper. A little bit of a down year at USC, as many people believed he could have been a top five pick heading into this collegiate season. Gets to learn behind Damian Lillard and carve out a role for himself as we don't know if Patrick Beverly is going to return to the uh, Milwaukee Bucks in free agency. Collier to Milwaukee makes a lot of sense if he slides that far. What say you, though? Should we have our two final mocks be two rounds? We're, we're going to do one next week. We're going to do one just before the... Big day on Wednesday. Should they be two rounds? 58 picks because there's two forfeited picks in the second round. Type Y for yes or type N for no. Back-to-back -back picks here for the Knicks. We'll flash both of them here. Tyler Kolek, the guard from Marquette, and Deron Holmes, the center from Dayton. Isaiah Hartenstein might leave in free agency. Holmes, an A-10 product who's athletic, can space the floor, good rebounder. Depoy as well for the Flyers is a good fit. And Kolek, who would be an excellent fit in Tom Thibodeau's style, high IQ, defends, great facilitator, lefty point guard, can be that lefty backup to Jalen Brunson. These two picks make a lot of sense. Kaishan George heading to the Wizards here at 26. I like George, man. Excellent three-point shooter, but he's very raw. Like, only played a handful of minutes for the Hurricanes a year ago. Didn't average a ton of points. Didn't stuff the stat sheet. 
but the film tells you he can be a solid player. And a team like Washington that has time to let him grow makes a lot of sense for Kaishan and the Wizards. Jacoby Walter, someone I actually like. like. I have him 19th on my big board, but just in this mock draft, he fell a little bit. He heads to the Timberwolves at 27. I like this fit for him. He could be a 3 and D two guard coming off the bench. The Timberwolves needed more scoring, needed more shooting, evident in their coming up short and shortcomings against the Dallas Mavericks. Walter, who has the physical tools to be a good defender, needs to just apply himself, but the jump shot is really good. Bobby Clintman heading to the Denver Nuggets at 28 as we almost round out this mock draft. Clintman's very versatile, and he can play the three, can play the four. Getting to work with Nikola Jokic, Aaron Gordon, could provide a lot of growth for Clintman, who played overseas last season after going to Wake Forest the year prior. Interesting journey for Clintman to get to the NBA, but he can shoot the three ball, play off ball, would fit really well next to Jokic and behind Aaron Gordon. Pakomi Dadietz, and I might have butchered that, but the forward from France is a raw prospect. Athletic, has a nice little jumper as well. I don't think he'll be ready to contribute for another two or three seasons at a high enough level to be in an NBA rotation. So he'll likely start off in the G League and be a developmental pick. But the Jazz, who already had a selection earlier in this draft, don't have to compete. They're not ready to compete. And if they want to take a high upside long-term pick, Pacome could be their guy. Final pick of this mock draft, the Boston Celtics, who are likely going to win the NBA championship tonight, by the way, take Kevin McCuller, the forward from the Jayhawks of Kansas. He would just be a good fit. And if they uh, keep this pick and add a rotation guy, McCuller, experienced, 23 years old, can shoot the three ball, can defend, can run out and transition, finish and play make as well, to me would be a great rotation piece for the Boston Celtics and the rich get richer. 30 picks down, that is my fifth mock draft of the pre-draft process. Grade it for me down below, A, B, C, D, or F. Don't hold off, it could be harsh. You can praise me as well, you can be nice, that's, that's possible, it can happen. Let me know what you think of my mock draft down below. Also, you can continue the conversation with me over on Twitter, at Nick underscore Roloff is the handle. Told you I have the latest on the NBA draft on a daily basis, so go give me a follow over there.